It's often said that if you want to test yourself as a driver, you have to go to the track and push yourself to your limits. And the cars that we often associate with the track are some of the fastest and sportiest cars you can build or buy. But what if you don't have money for or access to something like a Porsche GT car, a Supra, a WRX STI, or an Evo? This is a 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer ES. Consider it half of an Evo, maybe a quarter of an Evo. This little guy has been used and abused. He is high mileage. He's the definition of a beater car. And our challenge today is gonna to be to take this guy to the track, do a track day, and then get him home in one piece. Can you track your beater car? So before we go to the track, we need to make sure that our car is actually able to make it to the track. It needs to be mechanically sound. And that's especially important in the case of a car like this that has as many miles as it does, 190,000. So in this car's case, it's got a lot of wheel play up front, which means we're gonna have to change some tie rod ends. And then we're also gonna have to do some very general mechanical maintenance, like an oil change. So let's get to it. As you may have seen in the logos at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Advance Auto and we will be using their parts whenever possible, including uh, the inner and outer tie rods uh, that I'm about to change right now. So now that we've made the Lancer a little bit more mechanically sound, sort of track proof a little bit, we are beginning the first leg of our journey, uh, which is driving to the track, TMP, Toronto Motorsports Park in Toronto, Ontario. And admittedly, this is not the closest track to us that we could have picked. Uh, it is about 10 hours away from where we live in Virginia, but it is a very fun track. And more importantly, it's a very safe track, which is exactly what a little guy like this needs, considering that we don't really know how well he's gonna hold together on track. Uh, so we're gonna have to drive to the track. He's got to survive the track day And of course he's got to drive back from the track day if we can complete all three of these criteria successfully Well, then we'll have scientifically proven that everyone should track a beater car and if we fail uh, I assume no one will care I'll leave the car in, in Canada at a junkyard probably and I'll just ride back to the map So we are here at the beautiful Toronto Motorsports Park here in Cayuga, Ontario. Uh, we made it here successfully, a 10 hour drive, not too bad. So we took all the stuff that we uh, had in the car out of it so that we can go out on track. We're about to go do some laps basically in stock form. So stock all season roller tires, stock brake pads for the streets, stock brake fluid, stock rotors. We're gonna see how it does and then bring it back in and make a few adjustments. Beater car, and we've taken to the track. Stock everything. That means stock tires, stock brakes, stock power, obviously. This car is incredibly slow. Wow. What we are not getting a lot of is stopping power, grip, or stopping predictability. These brakes and brake fluid were never intended to be used on the track. So they're going to be the first thing to go. Sure, I have no corner grip. But that's not really the issue. The issue is that I can't stop for corners if I need to after about one lap. Even going as slow as I am. There's a Mini eating me up. <laughs> this thing is, it's doing something. rotation this thing oversteers all right so let's see if I can put down a heater real quick see how fast this puppy will go and we just put down a smoking one minute 47 seconds now that was, I had to give a point by on that lap. So that's not exactly the fastest this car will go here, but 
147 is not exactly screaming. Let's take the car back in and we'll set it up a little bit better with a few mods. All right, so we have gone out, done a couple of laps on stock, everything. So now we brought the car back into the pits and we're gonna make a couple of modifications. So we are removing these uh, steelies with some just all season tires and replacing them with these guys. JDM wheels that I picked up for a Honda from uh, J-Spec Auto down in Virginia. And uh, these beautiful Nankang AR1s, some seriously sticky 100 treadwear rubber that I got from our buddies at Speed Academy. We're gonna throw them on and see how things improve. So even with these garbage tires and no horsepower in the little Lancer, we have found that the uh, braking points here at TMP are too much for the little street pads that I have on the Lancer. So we are going to replace them with uh, some better stopping power stop brake pads that we picked up from Advance Auto and uh, should be able to slow down more consistently and faster. Uh, now we should be able to stop more quickly, more predictably, and we'll have a lot more uh, grip in the corners. So that will make us faster pretty much everywhere, except we haven't done anything for power because uh, there's, there's not so much you can do for power with this thing. And uh, we also haven't done anything to the suspension um, because that would kind of require an alignment and we just don't have time here at the track today. Uh, but with tires and brakes, let's see how the car feels different. set up with real tires, real tires, real brakes. And let's see what this car can do. She's feeling a ton better. So much more grip. Can't can't get anything to happen as far as a slide that the thing's got so much grip. Let me see if I can keep up with this Volvo here on these AR1s and he's not losing me through the twisty bits. Maybe a this Lancer is a bit of a supercar killer after all. Granted, I am trying to keep up with a Volvo, not exactly a Lamborghini. Whoa, this thing is so fun with these tires. You're just flat out. And there, there, there's, no, there's no slippage from the front end. It's got so much grip. This is it. Let's see what I can put down. Every time I go full throttle, I just get a bunch of smoke out the back. Brave through the chicane. That was pretty good, I feel, for me. By simply upgrading the tires and brakes, the little beater Lancer went from being a disaster on track to being an absolute riot. It had so little power and so much grip, you could be flat out nearly everywhere, which is very entertaining. In fact, the car had so much grip, it started to generate a bunch of oil blow-by during high G corners. Topping off the oil solved that problem though, and I started tossing the keys to some of our friends. There you go, knock yourself out. Not literally. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, this is slow! Oh, good! I'm feeling very happy right now! This is so slow! <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm trying here. Thing I've ever driven. <laughs> Man, you're on to 
did something with this, man. Yeah. I don't know if I had more fun in this or the forest or <laughs> Dude. Yeah, just flat out. Just the whole way. That, that's how you cook. So the day is pretty much over. Uh, it's funny because like five days ago, this car was just sitting, had been sitting for two years. So I just put some tie rods on it, put some oil in it, drove it 10 hours to TMP and we started lapping and uh, it killed it. It did amazing. Uh, we were throwing our friends in here. It's done probably 30 or 40 laps here today and no issues. Maybe a few more clunks in the, in the control arms and whatnot, but I, I just don't see how you can have more fun than this. I'm not really telling you to track a beater car, uh, but basically this car is probably crappier than anything you have. So take your car and go track it. it, it you don't need to have the fastest sports car or the most mods. You just need some tires and brake pads and some buddies and go turn laps. Let's go, let's go, hit me. Let's go, break it. Rotate it. 